Okay, in this tutorial, I'm just going to give you a few pointers about helping make your cycles renderings really nice. And that has nothing to do with cycles and Blender for the moment. So what it really is all about is, see, I have in this scene just this basic icosphere that I'm rendering. And I even have another light in the scene. Where is my other light? Somewhere in there. There's another light that I can drag in and out. You see I have a shadow from this is a light on the scene. And I can just drag this light through there. And you see I've added some extra light into the scene. or so a lot of times I'll just make these big lights like this because the big lights really work. It's better you're better doing that than taking a light and cranking up like this because if you crank it up you just blast it out. I mean you can imagine a flashlight shining at an object really powerfully. It just it overdoes it. So keep your light intensity low, but just make your object big, just kind of like you would do in photography. You'd have a big soft box that would put a lot of light out, or you might have a giant hemisphere that was putting out light. But the point I wanted to make was if you really want to make really really nice renderings, and this is just an introductory rendering, go to the bookstore and in the photography section look for a book by Kodak or sometimes other pe people. They're usually in an 8.5 by 11 size and they're not very thick and usually paperback and what it is somebody always produces a book on on light setups for photography, for professional photography. And you can go through there and they'll show you exactly the setup for rendering, you know, if they're shooting glass or if they're shooting a car outdoors or if they're shooting models inside a studio. And, and you look through and they'll have diagrams that show you the type of lights that they use and where they're situated in the scene and how they're pointing at the subject. And, the, and, you, and you'll see the results, and it's beautiful photographic work. Also, you know, you might not be able to afford a camera in the thousands and thousands of dollars to have a photographic studio, but you can simulate the light setup here within Blender by following that reference. And if you do just that, because otherwise you just, you know, you'll get stuck doing this. You'll go, oh, I can move the light here. I'll make it different shape, size. I'll add that. Now just cut, cut right to the chase. Go get a great reference book on photog photographic lighting. And it, it'll really improve your renderings dramatically. I mean dramatically. Okay, well, so that was the, that's the main point about this lesson. Let me see. There was one, one other thing I wanted to mention in here. And that was, what the heck was it? <laughs> I don't know. I forget. Now, if I got the two windows... Oh, oh yeah, real quick on nodes. So ba basically this was the rendering that we I showed from the previous lesson. But if you want to modify this to have more than just one material like this, and I have a playlist. If you click on my Sci-Fi Animator channel link, you go to and you go to my YouTube channel, I have playlists for cycles, rendering, material, things like that that you can watch through. That'll help you out. But just to know, you can just click down here and grab the node editor and within the node editor by default I don't see the node and in the old day you would but they change the version has changed since I made that last tutorial and what you have to do is you have to click this sphere button and then I'm going to scroll in with my middle wheel mouse and there it is there's my diffuse shader it's identical to what I have over here for this object right so if I was to come over here and change this to some other material say like glass and I'll look at it over here in rendered mode instead there's glass in the scene and you can see it changes it to glass in here. Well in those playlists that I have I show you how you take advantage of these nodes from the outset and you can add additional nodes in here to mix glass and different types of materials just to help you get started. But you can see Blender does a great job. Of course if I just right click that you can see now I have that light and you can see what happens if I overdo that light. Watch what happens. It just blows out the scene. You just, you know, even if I set it up to like 10, it really brightens out the scene. And if I go over to the render tab, where we did before in the previous lesson, to the sampling, and if I even took that preview up to say 50, and there it's, it's doing it right there through 50, you can still see these little white sparkles that you don't really want in the scene. Let me zoom in. Yeah, see those little white sparkles? That's typically what happens if you have your too much intensity to your light. So your better bet's to keep your light intensity lower. Whoops, I'll make that down to one. Let's put that down to one. And instead, let's just scale this light up, S. I'll just scale that light up in size. And then when it runs through all 50 samples, you can see the glass looks much nicer as it's going. Let me zoom in.
Let me see, 9, 10. Yeah, so it works pretty good. All right, but the book. It's the book that's really the point of this lesson. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.